Hi everyone, this is Ben with Dream Factory. In this screencast, I will show how to get an example application up and running. This is a quick tutorial that shows you how to make some basic API calls to Dream Factory, and it shows a lot about how to configure the back end to build uh, your own applications. So here I am in Quick Start, and I'm gonna cover what you do to get started here. Just follow the instructions in the README file, and what I'm really gonna cover is how to do what's in the README file. And it's important to remember that the configuration for any of these examples in, in terms of Dream Factory itself is really by and large the same. So by following this tutorial, all of these other examples will really work as well. So I'm going to choose AngularJS for my example. When I click on that, you'll just see the README file. And this shows you basically walks through what to set up, and that's what we're going to do in the screencast. So go ahead and read that. Um, if you can't follow along here, the screencast will be pretty quick. So first thing you want to do is go into the config tab and you're going to set up cores. And what that really allows is it allows you to develop. Uh, you can develop locally. It also is good for use cases where you want to host your application on a different server than the server where Dream Factory is running. So for development, I'm going to click plus here and go ahead and click star or rather enter star. Uh, in origin paths and headers, and I'm put max age of zero. And for development, we're just going to open up our HTTP verbs here and enable this and save it. So that's the first step that we need to do. The second thing is you need to set up a role. And the purpose of roles is really think of roles as um, uh, control over the end users using the application. So the end users are obviously not administrators. They are end users and they don't have complete access generally over everything that's accessed by the API. Now in this example, we're just gonna open up access just to show how it works. So we'll create a address book role, make this active, and in the access tab, you'll click plus, and you wanna basically for development, just open up all of the services by setting the default to all here. Now, when you're really deploying to production, you won't wanna do that. You'll wanna pick like the DB, for example, and pick the tables uh, that you, you know this particular application would be accessing. Uh, but here we'll set this just to all, leave it to star, and put in get post put patch delete for HTTP verbs, which will grant access to the API for, for CRUD operations. And then API as requester, leave that as is, and just create your role, and then you'll be done. Now, in this particular address book application, we want to let users register themselves and also sign in themselves from the actual AngularJS application UI. And the way to do that from a configuration standpoint is you actually just have to do something very easy. You, uh, I'm actually gonna refresh the browser here to pick up our role. So you go into services and then there's a user service for user management and you wanna click on that. And then in the config tab, you want to allow open registration. So make sure that that's checked and then select the role that we just created address book and then you'll leave this blank. It actually defaults to local uh, email service there, but you want to leave it blank uh, because you don't, in this example, we're not going to require email registration uh, for the users who are registering. So go ahead and do that and then click to update the service and it should update successfully. Now, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and we need to actually uh, import our application for two reasons. Number one, we need an API key so that the users who authenticate can actually uh, make calls using the API key for the correct application. Secondly, this Angular application is actually going to reside in Dream Factory's uh, file system. So Dream Factory comes with a default database, a SQL database. It also comes with a full-blown file system. And our app needs to run somewhere, so we're going to import it into that file system. So click on import on the left here. And in this example, I'm just going to select, click select here. That's going to uh, bring the, uh, basically pull down the code from a GitHub uh, repo and so don't change this and then go ahead and select files as the storage service. If you had S3 or some other file system hooked up it would show up in the drop down here if you set that up in services. So go ahead and import that and what that's doing it will take a couple seconds what that's doing is importing the app it's also creating the schema automatically so the objects that this app requires uh, you can actually see in the schema as well as in the data. And it also brings in some sample data so you don't have to create records from scratch, and you'll see that in a moment. So we imported the app. 
Now, this app, if we go back to the Apps tab and we click Play here, it will, it will actually not have uh, file permissions yet, so we need to open up file permissions so that it can be viewed basically uh, on the internet, in my case just on localhost. So that's an explicit permission to the file system. So there's a, a whole files API for local file storage, so you want to click on that and in the config tab here you're going to add a value and you can pick up that value from the readme file so for the angular.js application uh, down here you'll see that you just want to add this folder which is called address book for angular.js you can copy that in and put it here and then your container in this example is going to be local remember this is local file storage so we're going to click local and update our service and that will open up file access. So there's basically only one other thing that you need to do um, in the the application source code is ready to go and you can look at how it works uh, all of the source code. Um, obviously you can open that up in the files here. There's one thing we need to do which, which is we need to set a constant. We need to set the API key which is blank in the sample code. So here's our API key. Yours will be different. So go ahead and highlight this text and copy it, this long string. And once you've done that you can go into files where our application, so double click on this, you'll see the app uh, here, and you can just navigate in and go into app.js, and you can um, just double click it, and that'll open up a little code editor, and under the app API key constant, uh, this is actually not the right one, so I wanna copy that in there. Uh, in yours, it'll, it'll be uh, blank. Uh, most likely, or it'll have a, some long string. So make sure you copy in that and uh, click save and you'll get a confirmation. Then you can go ahead and close this window out. So quick recap, we um, set up our cores, we set up our roles, we did open registration in the services tab, we imported our app, we opened up file access by going to the file service, and then the last thing is we added our API key to app.js. So once you've done all that, you can go ahead and click on the play button here and that will launch your application. And in order to really understand how all the API calls work, go ahead and read the uh, tutorial readme file. It talks about how to log in, register, and make uh, all of your CRUD operations. So that's it. Hopefully this is helpful. And uh, check out more information uh, in the welcome page or at our website at www.dreamfactory.com. Thanks.